In this video, we're going to focus on two different things. First, we're going to focus on the two different types of motion that we have in one-dimensional kinematics. And then we're going to look at uh, some different ways that we can represent motion. So, for starters, if we're just looking at the different types of motion in kinematics, we have, first of all, what we call uniform motion. And uniform motion simply means that you have an object which is moving with a constant velocity. The term uniform just means constant. So uniform motion is constant velocity, and that implies that it's a uh, uh, constant speed in a straight line. The direction is never going to change. We have two basic equations that we can use for con uh, uniform motion, and that really is, is kind of handy. Um, and that's going to be the, split, the definition of displacement, which is delta x, or x final minus x initial, and then for velocity. And simply put, v is equal to d over t, or displacement divided by time. Again, we're going to want to use units of meters for displacement where we can, and time is going to be units of seconds. The second type of motion that we have is uniformly accelerated motion. Now this is sometimes referred to as UAM, simply because it's short for uniformly accelerated motion. Um, we're not going to use that terminology, we're just going to say that it's accelerated motion with the understanding that it's uniform acceleration. And basically what that means is that the acceleration is constant and does not change in time. Or you might think of it as the velocity is going to change at a constant rate. So this does imply that the speed changes and or direction. Most of the time that we spend in kinematics is going to be dealing with uniformly accelerated motion in one fashion or another. Now let's take a look at the different representations of motion. And there are three ways that we can represent motion. The first is with a motion diagram, sometimes referred to as the particle model, because we'll represent entire objects like a car, which is not a particle. We'll represent it as just a dot or as though it's a particle. And when we look at a motion diagram, um, you can compare it to a stroboscopic photograph. Or you might also say um, that it's a multi-flash photography. Now I suspect you don't really understand what that means. So let me put it to you in a way that I think you will understand. Um, this would be like making a flip book. You've done this in other classes, I'm sure of it where you make a flip book and as you flip through the pages going from the front to the back, you see maybe a figure of a man walking across the page. And the faster you flip the book, the faster he walks. Well, if you can imagine, it's like making a flip book with clear pages and then the pages are all aligned on top of each other so that you can see each of the small movements as the pages elapse, where each page is going to represent some small time interval. So for example, if I have a car which is moving at a constant velocity or somebody is walking with a constant speed, then they might start here at the origin and what we're looking at, this axis is representing distance, or space, I should say. 
um, and, and it's the x-axis. So the object is moving from the left to the right. And so they start here, and every one second, they are the same distance apart because they're moving with a constant speed. So this would be at second, the well, the starting point. This is after one second. This is after two seconds. And so each dot has an equal time interval. Well, if the object is speeding up, then, and again, moving to the right, then what we would see is something like this. It starts here, and then the dots are really close together, but because they're speeding up, they're covering more and more distance during each time interval. And remember, the time interval is the same between each dot. So this would indicate that the object is speeding up. This is accelerated motion, and this is constant motion or uniform motion. All right, these uh, motion diagrams, honestly, they're not particularly useful. Um, it's most important that you know how to interpret what's happening because of the dots. And in short, you need to know that if the dots are getting further apart, that the object is speeding up. If uh, the dots are far apart, then it's moving fast. If the dots are close together, it's moving slow. And so that's what you need to, to understand with these motion diagrams. But we're not really going to use those a whole lot. You just have to be able to look at them in most cases. You just have to be able to look at it and interpret what it means. The second way we can represent motion is graphically. And we will spend uh, a fair bit of time here in our videos going over uh, the graphical method. And that's because graphs are extremely helpful in leading you to an understanding of a situation when it comes to analyzing a particular interaction. Now we look at three different graphs. That's going to be the position time graph, the velocity time graph, and the acceleration time graph. And we'll get to that in just a minute. And then the third type, I just want to make sure you have all three in one spot so you know what we're going into. And the third way is a numerical approach to representing motion. And numerically, that means we're going to be using equations. And we've got four primary equations of motion. Just to list them out for you, because we're going to need these later, d is equal to v initial t plus 1 half at squared. d is equal to 1 half times v initial plus v final times t. v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2ad. And then finally, we get uh, v final is equal to v initial plus at. Now, what we're going to do in one of the upcoming videos is we're going to derive these equations from a graph. but I wanted you to have them all in one place and I wanted you to see it right now. 